Hi everyone, uh, my name is Fatih Damir. I'm going to sit for this talk because I'm also going to do a lot of typing. Um, for today's Tech Day I've prepared a talk titled Modern CSS Techniques and CSS is some, something that everybody, almost everybody struggles with because there are a lot of things that come with CSS and I hope I'm going to make more things clear about CSS. Well, I, I recently graduated uh, from my bachelor's degree in computer science and afterwards I've, I've started as a full-time developer at Offici and I always work with, work, work with CSS, if it was for my hobby projects or school projects and I actually al always liked CSS because, because changes um, that I did in my CSS were being reflected almost automatically in my browser and that was really cool to see something visual. But as time progressed and I became more adept with working with CSS, I got annoyed by having to repeat myself with stuff like not being able to define my constants, what's possible in programming languages, or vendor prefixes. Um, you have like every browser does something in their own way and you have to, you have to take that all of those inputs into consideration. And those two issues here are kind of minor issues, but my biggest problem with CSS is CSS hacks. Like, how do I align an item? How do I, how do I center it properly? How do I make sure it always works correctly? And that, that actually gets really complex because you have a million different, different ways to do the same thing. And a lot of the things don't make sense, but they work. And because you achieve a desired result, doesn't mean you have to be happy with how you did it. But anyways, that was the way how CSS was for a long time. And we kind of lived with it. But then came these things, the preprocessors. So you could have your constants. And you could, uh, for example, nest CSS. And you didn't have to uh, prefix everything for different browsers. They took care of it. And it's really awesome. But this talk is not about preprocessors. I, I hope you all are using one of the many preprocessors available. But this talk is more about how to properly align elements inside CSS because I think that's the most complex task in CSS and that's the most task you have. So let's, let's do something interesting. Let's position a div inside another div horizontally. How would you go about doing it? Like, that depends, right? It depends what browsers you are targeting. It depends what the display properties are of the both dividers. So let's say the inner div is a block level element. You can say margin zero auto. If the width is smaller than the parent, then it will be centered. Or if it's an inline block level element, we can just treat it as text and set the text align property of the parent to center, and it will just work. But I actually Googled for this question, and I came on this Stack Overflow <laughs> question that was asked eight years ago. But wow. since then, it's w been watched 2.8 million times. And this is only one question. And the funny thing here is, in parentheses, the, uh, the asker says, if it's even possible. <laughs> so he tried everything. and. He's not sure if it's even possible to, to do uh, such a thing. And like, the answer is obviously uh, what we just talked about, margin zero auto if the inner is a uh, block level element. But then this is my issue with CSS. Like if you're targeting EA8 or more, you have to set the display property to table, and then it will work. What? I'm not building a table. Why do I need to set the display property on table? That doesn't make sense for me. And I'm sure many of you also have written CSS or seen CSS, and you are like, Wait, what? what? Why is the CSS working for this for this result? But let's take it up on this. Let's do vertical alignment because horizontal alignment is now pretty simple, pretty simple. And vertical alignment, that's where things get more interesting. Like, oh my god, like <laughs> vertical alignment in CSS is a nightmare. And I also looked for this question on Stack Overflow and the TLDR was that you have to use table cell when you're parent and set the child on inline block. Like, what? All right. Well, OK, that's how CSS works. But why do I have to feel like this when I'm working with CSS? <laughs> it's just trying out all the different, all the different things. And when you, when, you just, when you just have written your CSS, it's easy. But then uh, a, few, a few weeks later or a few months later, you have to come back to the CSS. And then you're like, oh god, what's, what's happening here? So there must be a better way. And for a long time, there wasn't. You just had to accept all these rules, and you had to know them. And that's just how CSS was. That's just how it works, so deal with it. But 
right now there is a better way actually to do it and a well supported way so this is also uh, this really this has flexbox also has really nice browse support so before i'm gonna go into what flexbox is how many of you already know flexbox all right that's about half of you and i hope this talk will uh, enlighten the other half uh, about flexbox so um, this is my description of flexbox it's basically positioning your elements in modern web applications without pulling your hairs out. And th that's really a huge feat in CSS to be able to do something like that. Uh, the specifications the, describe it as follows. It's designed for laying out more complex applications and it gives the flex containers the ability to manipulate its contents based on the available space. All right, all right. So let's see this in action. How, how, does, how does this look? Well, let's, let's do the horizontal and vertical line with Flexbox instead of the, the traditional way with, with CSS. So for the demos, I'm using a, a tool called JSBin. And on the left side, we have HTML. In the middle, we have CSS. And on the right, we have the output, which is automatically uh, on save. Uh, it's display. So if I create a div with a class of container and a child inside it, it's called item. This is our HTML structure, that's clear, right? And if we have a container, let's make it a pretty container. Let's give it a background color of sky blue, for example. And let's set the height to something like, is this readable, by the way? No. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's set the height to, say, 400 pixels. And welcome. Let's, uh, let's also create a background color for, for our item, just to make it visual what, what we're doing here. So we, s we set the background color to, for, for example, let's say gold. And let's also give it a width and a height so we can actually see the item visually. So a height of, for example, 100 pixels, and maybe this the same for the width. So now we have this. This is nothing fancy, it's nothing special. But let's position this uh, horizontally with Flexbox. We would set the container. Flexbox is built up of two major components, like the, the Flex container, which is like the parent, and that's in, in this case the, the container div, and all its direct children, which are Flex items. And you can have uh, uh, different properties for the container, the Flex container, and the Flex items. So let's make our container a flex container with say display flex and that's like the specification says that a flex container can manipulate the positioning of its elements so we could do that by saying for example justify content to center and that justify content is a way in flexbox the flexbox is built of uh, two axes the main and the cross axis and justify content works on the main axis i will go into more detail of what the difference between the two is and we, we say just center this and set. And if we wanted to do, do, to do the same for vertical alignment, we could simply say align items across the cross axis on center. And this actually also works for both horizontal and vertical. So if you wanted to center this element perfectly within the box, we could simply say justify content and align items. And we now have a perfectly centered element inside the box. And this was actually all it took to write this. The other is just simply style, extra style. So that's pretty cool. No more tables or table cells, but just, just flexbox. But we can also, like this is from the uh, flex container perspective, but the flex items also have the ability to control how they're uh, aligned inside this container. So if you remove this and let's say from the items perspective we wanted to perfectly center this item this actually works margin auto and just centers the element and this basically says just set the margin auto on the top margin auto on the left right and bottom just centering and this works just like uh, this as well for like we're used to with this big block or the, or like this which did not work before so I think this is really cool. Is there, are there any questions? So if you have a 
if you move line five, I think, then it will want to work. Um, that's a good question. And if you remove line five, it will not work. Because now the container has a display of block, and that doesn't support it. So Flexbox does make this uh, possible. I think the other case does work without the flex, right? Yes, the other case. Yes, the other case does work without flex. All right. So there was a short demo for Flexbox. Let's go about more of the specification of Flexbox. Like uh, we, we create a flex container by saying display flex, and it will create a flex container as a block level element ish. So and and an inline element by saying inline flex. Uh, we can set the direction of our of our uh, of our uh, items inside our flex container, and how we can do that is with the flex direction. So we can set it to row, which is the default. It will center everything from to, from left to right. But we can also say do it from top to bottom. And that's pretty cool. And it the crazy thing is this it do, it also does this in reverse order. It's possible, and you can say row reverse, and without like. It just reverses the order. And I also want to demo this. Why not? So if we had uh, like even more items, and let's create one, two, three, and remove, remove this. Now we have three items uh, next to each other because uh, the flex direction is set to row. That's the default. So we can set flex direction because we know this to example column and this works so that's cool but we can also say column reverse and now it will actually reverse the order and that also works with with row reverse so that is pretty that's pretty crazy that, that this is possible and uh, while I'm displaying this I also want to show another property of Flexbox uh, every item uh, also has an order key and that that also affects the ordering of the items inside Flexbox. So for example, let's say we want to target this element. We can say the last child, an item with which, which is a last child. Let's set the background color to maybe something like white. Right, this is visible. And let's set the order property, which is basically, which is standard zero. Let's set it to minus one, for example. And this is crazy. This this is possible. All right. Um, important of Flexbox is it is meant to build one-dimensional layouts. So you're not supposed to build a grid with CS with Flexbox. That's not what it's meant to do. But you can, however, nest flex containers inside of each other to build two-dimensional layouts. Like that's the way. But th that's um, something CSS Grid is much more, like much better at. But for now, nesting CSS containers is the way to go because CSS Grid doesn't have really good browser support yet. All right, uh, this is just a simple, simple uh, diagram showing uh, the properties I just uh, displayed. And let's go a little bit about uh, a little bit more on the specification. So we have a main axis and a cross axis. And that's important to know in Flexbox because the different properties are um, working with, with these concepts. So if the flex direction is set to row, our main axis will be from left to right. So horizontal. And otherwise, it will be vertical. And the cross, cross axis would be the one like like if vertical and the horizontal and other, uh, vice versa. Is, is that clear to everyone? So the properties I also displayed, uh, we have uh, justify content, which works on the main axis, and align items, which work on the cross axis. Uh, I displayed this with uh, center, with the positioning uh, horizontally or vertically, but you can also set it to flex start, or flex end, or space around or space between. And that's really cool to building like navigation bars that where you want every item to have space between then Flexbox will just take care of them. 
Now, another property of, of uh, Flexbox is uh, Flex Wrap. And you, this is also a property you can set on a Flex container. And it will basically tell you if items should be wrapped, yes or not, if, um, um, based on their width. So if Flex Wrap is set to wrap, if the items need more space, they will just wrap on the line below. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. And what Flexbox behind the scenes does is something like this. It sets flex lines, like right, like this. Imagine this was a perfectly horizontal line. And also here. And the reason I, I drew this is because based on, on these flex lines, which, which you don't see, it, you can also uh, manipulate how that's displayed. And you can display that by with the align content. So if align content is set to flex start, for example, these two would just go to the top. And flex end would just push them to the bottom, etc. So align content doesn't have effect if flex wrap is set to no wrap, which is the default. Hmm. All right, so I talked a lot about the flex container. So what about the items? So you can, uh, the flex items are only the direct children of the flex container. So if we had like uh, a flex container here is uh, the diff with the class container and the flex items would be every uh, diff with a class of item because they are directly nested. But if we had another diff inside this, it, it would not work. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be a flex item anymore. And I also displayed this property. Um, what? Can a flex item be directly a new flex container? Or? Yes, that's possible. So you can just arbitrarily nest them uh, however you want. So you can have both of us in one node? Sorry? You can have both of us in a second. Yes, it can be a flex item and a flex container at the same time. So that's possible. And that's also. Number the text and then order In it. In the diff items, you have text. Yes, here you mean? Yeah, where you want to show, and then you want to order the items based on. Oh, you mean like if I had like item one, item two, or what? No. Or no. based on the content, you mean? In the content. Oh, no, that, that's it's not possible. So you, you actually mean if I had two here, one here, and then. No, you have text like, let's say, like. Yeah. And then you want to manipulate. Oh, how I. All right. So, how I would go about doing it is I would set this, I would give this an ID or maybe a class, and then I would Another target this, ta target that, and then set the order property if you want that. But obviously, the e easiest way would just to fix your HTML and set it in the right way. That's, how, that's what I would recommend. But if, it's, if you really have no other solution than to fix the ordering with CSS, then I would go about but I would really just stay out of it because it can get really messy. Then you're debugging code and you're like, what, how, why, how is this this thing? So you have to keep track of all the orders. It's also not really nice for screen reading and stuff. I'm not sure if they take the order in consideration. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Probably not, no. That's just a good answer. So just a question about the order. Um, so you were setting for instance, you, you set order to minus, uh, minus one. Yes. And then, um, if you have three items with order set to minus one, mm -hmm. those will all sort between them in the order they are in HTML. Yes, in sort After order. So, yeah. yeah, that's correct. So they, they all have st uh, standard order set to zero. Right. So then the source order would have. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Um, let's let's uh, look at a few more properties before I'm going to dive into another demo because we want to see more CSS. Um, flex grow property. This is a really nice property because um, it basically gives you a way to look at the container's width and based on that get a fraction of the container's width. So let's say we let's say this width was something like 120 pixels, so 120 pixels. 
it would divide 120 pixels by 3, because they all have flex grow set to 1, 1, 1. We divide it by the total number of flex grow, like by 3, and then that's 40, so every, everyone would get 40 pixels. And the example here below, this would get 40 pixels width, this would get 80 pixels, this would get, no, 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 this would get 30, <laughs> 60, <laughs> sorry, math is failing. <laughs> uh, flex shrink is, um, <laughs> flex, flex, flex shrink is, looks a bit like uh, flex grow, but it works um, the opposite way. So if your container, um, if you have a container that is 1000 pixels, and the flex items request 1120 pixels. So you now you have 120 pixels extra. But where is CSS going to get that 120 pixels extra? It can. So it will almost always overflow content. So how you can fix that is uh, you can set flex shrink, and that will just take the 120 pixels, divide it by the amount of flex shrink you have, and then extract everything. So with my example before, if you also had three children, then everybody, every, every children would get uh, minus 40 pixels. No, flex shrink doesn't work if you have flex work. Any other questions? Then we also have a flex basis property, which is which is a way to set a default width for your content before before letting Flexbox send like align your items. So if you all if you know that your item always needs at least 100 pixels before Flexbox aligns it, you can set the flex basis property. And this you can see this as a min width, but then for flex flex items. And then there are some shorthands, the, like the guys who wrote the C CSS specifications. They really like shorthands. CSS Grid is also full of them, um, but. This shorthand is actually really nice because it also does uh, smart things. Uh, flex is a shorthand for flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis all in one rule. And you, you also can use flex, uh, use this property by only setting the first argument. So only the flex grow property. And what that would do is it will just automatically figure out what the best properties would be for flex shrink and flex basis. That's why it's also recommended to use this short end instead of directly targeting flex grow or flex shrink or flex basis. And flex row is just simply a, a shorthand for flex traction and flex wrap. So I think it's uh, enough talk. Now it's time for a demo. And for this demo, I want to remove, like, yeah, I want to remove everything and except my HTML. And we also gave a Tosti talk today, and that's simply uh, the condensed version of this Tech Day, where uh, where we just uh, try to give the Tech Day for students who don't have time, and we also give them free Tostis and drinks, because we're nice. So one of the questions we got during the Tosti talk, was by Mats, who also was uh, with us, was if we could build a, s a simple UI, like with, uh, messaging like text. So somebody says uh, hello and it would be aligned to the left. Another one says um, another replies would be aligned to the right, left, right, etc. So basically I message like but then in Flexbox. So how would we go about doing it? Well in Flexbox we can we can uh, make use of the um, uh, flex direction property of uh, column. So everything would be stacked on top of each other and with all the odd items, we could position them to the right or to the left, like whatever you want. So let's let's build that. Let's first create them uh, our HTML. Let's say hello. The reply would be hi. How are you? Etc. And that's actually how I message. <laughs> so uh, our container is. Uh, let's define our container as a flex container. Now we have our items like displayed next to each other because flex direction is default uh, set to a row. Well, let's make use of the flex flow shorthand. And we say we want them to be displayed as a column. And we don't want them to wrap. Then let's make a, 
really appealing design. I'm not a designer. So let's set it like padding 20 <coughs> and a background color of default, oh God. <laughs> let's say sky blue. I like sky blue. <laughs> <laughs> and let's align all the items to flags and well, that, that, that looks decent, that looks decent. Let's set uh, the color to white. All right, that's a bit better. But then we want all the odd items, uh, different color and to the left. How would we do that? Mm, well, hmm? to the left, like the beginning. Yes, <laughs> to the beginning. So how would you do that? And like in normal CSS, you would Yes, correct. Like we, we could say target all the um, nth childs that are odd and give them maybe a background color of a yeah, black, why not? Looks good. Of black. And set align them, like set the margin right property to auto. Because it will push the item as much to the left because margin right auto would push it as much. And we simply have this UI, so if we had a more interesting conversation, it would just work. Why not use uh, align self? Align self would also work. Wouldn't it be way easier to understand if you use only the flex box um, specification? Uh, I'm not sure I use the right word now. Because now you use margin right, but that, that is usually used for other stuff. Mm -hmm. So why not keep using Flexbox terminology? Yeah, I actually wanted to keep the demo a little bit more simple, but align self uh -huh. would also work. Because I just didn't want to throw even more keywords, but that's a really nice thing. Uh, so what Mark says is you can also say align self to flex start. If I can write align self, that would also work. That's a good one. So that's Flexbox specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I will also have uh, links in my slides for even more, um, like for to the specification and better, uh, better tutorials. All right. So that was my short demo. Um, there are a lot of more interesting things you can do with Flexbox, but luckily we have a hands-on session today, so you can experiment with everything you're thinking of uh, by with doing it with Flexbox. So how does the browser support look like? Well, I went to this website, and I made a screenshot for you first. <laughs> like the current, the current uh, browser support is actually really good. Like, like the green means it supports it really good. And only IE 11 supports an old version of the syntax, which is not really complete. And yeah, just do your research if you're targeting IE 11. But we are targeting, uh, we are building an Atlassian add-on. And luckily, we can use uh, Flexbox with Atlassian, so that's really cool. But Flexbox, oh god, I have to But Flexbox doesn't come with uh, without its issues. There are some uh, there are some properties that are not uh, fully that are not fully um, supported yet by some of the browsers. But there are really minor things like. Uh, there's a main content keyword, some, something somewhere that does something with a property. I'm not even sure what it does, but all those things are not working fully. So that's actually really well documented on this side, um, and also how you would go around. Uh, and if you want to learn more, uh, here's a link to the specification of, of Flexbox. And usually specifications are really, really, really boring, but this one is decent. And this site, CSS Tricks, has, has a, uh, like a complete guide to Flexbox, which is really awesome. And, um, and most of the images I also got from them, so it's worth checking out. So are there any more questions about Flexbox before I move on to grid? When should you not use it? When should you not use it, if, if it's not supported? That's the only reason when I would not use Flexbox. So could you use this to make one HTML like 
definition of your interface and then have it um, like leave out parts of the interface when you're switching to a mobile screen, for instance, which is really small and tall. Yes, you can do it. You can just simply do that with uh, media queries. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I talked a lot about uh, a lot about Flexbox, and Flexbox is really meant to build uh, to build one-dimensional layouts. So one-dimensional layouts, you could see that as a display property of block, which would take the full width, and it would stack on top of each other from top to bottom. That would be one-dimensional top to bottom, and inline block would be from left to right because they would go left, from left to right next to each other. And CSS Grid is a way to build two-dimensional layouts. And it works great in combination with Flexbox. Uh, because you can define your grid, you can define your two-dimensional layout with CSS Grid. And then your individual UI elements inside CSS Grid, you could display them with Flexbox. So th think a little bit about display table. But don't think a lot about tables because tables suck. For the most part, if you're not building a table, if you need a table, it's good. But if you mostly, if you don't, if you don't need a table, they suck. But CSS Grid for two-dimensional layouts is really awesome. So you find your header here, your your sidebar, your content, your footer. It's really good at at working. So there's actually no Flexbox versus CSS Grid. Like on the, the internet, people who are working with CSS Grid or Flexbox, they're reading up on the two. They're like, well, do I use Flexbox or do I use Grid? What's better? No, they're, they're friends. Use them together. It's like seeing, saying uh, a text align versus, versus display block. You know? That also doesn't make sense. That's the same as this. But that, that was actually also my initial reaction because it got complex with all the properties with Flexbox and Grid. So just remember, this. they are friends. Uh, the browser support of CSS Grid currently is not it's not really great. Like there is a lot of a lot of red, especially like on the mobile world. Um, so I wouldn't use it in production yet, but it's definitely worth checking out, and it's I think a fun topic for a tech day. So let's get ready for for CSS Grid because it's not here yet, but let's brace ourselves. Let's first start a little bit with uh, with the CSS Grid terminology. So CSS Grid is the dividing uh, separators uh, between uh, CSS grid components are called a, a grid line. So this has uh, two and three uh, row grid lines and four uh, vertical lines for columns. Uh, each unit in a, in a CSS grid is called a grid cell. Just like a table cell, we have a grid cell. Two adjacent grid lines, the space between them, are called grid tracks. So it's basically the same as a row or a column. So this would be a, a row, and this would be a column. And one or more grid cells, which form a rectangle, is called a grid area. So it has to form a rectangle. So you can't have a you can't have something like a, a T shape. That's not possible. So it has to form a rectangle. I would say let's just go build a simple application with CSS Grid. And I'm going back to JS bin and remove all of this. And I actually pre prepared some HTML. And this is simply HTML that describes the uh, some of the programming languages we used in the previous tech day. And we have, like if we look at our Let's close this part. If you look at look at our HTML, we have a container, we have we have a header, it's this. Then we have a sidebar which links to the programming languages, and then uh, languages uh, with uh, the title and description. And we have a footer. All right. So let's make this a bit more pretty than it's actually. Now. And let's first go about styling for mobile devices, like let's take a mobile first approach. And for a mobile first approach, I would say, let's get rid of the sidebar. I don't, I don't want to show a sidebar on my mobiles. So I would say display set to, oh, to, none, to none. 
So no more sidebar. And let's have our uh, our header and our footer. Like let's make them a little bit more pretty. <laughs> but there's actually a, another really cool color. It's called Firebrick. Firebrick. This is actually a color. It's supported. I don't know. But oh well. So and make the color white. So let's make it a bit more pretty by adding some padding. Yeah, maybe not that much padding. Ten. Yeah, ten. Thank you. It's looking, it's looking quite <coughs> nice now. And let's make it so that our uh, languages also look a bit more uh, more their part. So let's create a border of maybe dashed one pixels and also a firebreak color because it's a nice color. So now we have this amazing design. Wow. All right, now let's let's get into CSS uh, Grid. So CSS Grid has the same same separation between a grid container, a container and its items, just like Flexbox. And we we define our grid container by setting the display property to grid. So now we have now we have a grid container. Yeah. It's good. It's good. And I want to I want to uh, create a, a two column layout on on small devices. So let's say let's set the grid template columns property and to what do we set this i want two equal spaces we can set it to we can set it to 50% uh, for example but there is some actually i want something like flex grow just like we had with flexbox so how do we do that well we have actually uh, one fraction and we want two fractions so in total so we have a grid now so we have a really pretty looking website right now. But we're not there yet. I, I want my, uh, my header to span the full, the full width, the full column width. How would I do that? Like, if this was a table, we can set the, uh, the call span attribute of the table to two, for example, and put span the full width. And you have something similar in CSS Grid to achieve uh, such a task. So I'm going back to my uh, header and footer. And let's set the grid column. And let's make it so that it spans two. And it really looks good now. But the problem is, if we set, if we define another grid, like another grid column, what would happen? Well, this would happen. And I don't want this. I want my header and my footer to span the full width, starting from the first column. So how would we do that? Well, maybe we can do something like name a grid line. Well, that's actually possible with CSS uh, grid. So we can name each individual grid line. So we have a grid line here, we have a grid line over here, and we have a grid line here. And we actually want to name the last one. So we can always target the last one. So let's, let's come here and let's say this is the calls the columns and grid line and in our header and our footer you want to say you need to st always start at the first column and you need to go till you find a grid line called calls and and we can actually demonstrate that this is working by doing this so it will it would actually obviously still work if we add another fraction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's not do that. Let's have our two fraction layout. Let's give this languages a bit more breathing room, 20 pixels. And there's also another cool property of uh, CSS Grid I like to show that uh, that's it. And uh, that is uh, the gaps with between the grids. So we can set the grid gap property to 10 pixels, for example. And now we have actually a decent looking web application. But what if we wanted uh, what if what if we wanted NIM to span also the full width? Well, how would you do that? Uh, that's easy, right? We can just do this. We can target NIM because I already defined the class name. And 
done. It's really easy. And you can actually write your uh, media queries, and then uh, if, if this gets even bigger, you can define your, your, your grid columns uh, another way, etc. And like for those of you who are like paying attention and asking questions in your head, like well, how does this work, how does that work, you might say, well, where the heck are the rows coming from? Why is why do why do they have a certain certain height? Well, that's basically a grid property. Uh, the grid template, uh, the grid template rows is uh, by default set to auto, so it will automatically figure out how much height it needs, and based on that, it will just work. So I can also demonstrate this that we can set them ourselves by saying, for example. 200 pixels and another again I need to target the rows I need to target the rows so like the first is 200 pixels and then we want another 200 pixels and then maybe we want 10 pixels okay that, that breaks my styling obviously but let's say maybe you want 10 em like you are really flexible with how you're uh, displaying this so, any questions so far? So, when you added the, uh, the grid gap, it, it put a gap also between the outer edges? Yes. And is there a way to only do it for inner edges? Yes. Ah, awesome. Um, s like, grid gap basically works on both uh, vertical and horizontal, but you can set the, um, the you can set the property so it only goes horizontal only goes vertical. So if you just say 10, 1, go then, then, then. Oh, still OP. Thank you. So this would just work. And we can also say uh, maybe we want this like twice as big, 20 pixels. So that's actually possible. Right, and then my real question was, uh, and this is cool, yep. by the way. <laughs> But um, I was wondering, so when you put that in, yeah. the, the, there you also mean this? Yes, that gap. Can you leave that out? Uh, that gap is actually from, I thought it was from, I thought it was from the, no, no, no. I, I'm not sure, actually. That's a good question. Yeah, can, you, can you give it four arguments? <laughs> if I don't want the gap on the, the sides? No, you can't give it four arguments, only, only two. So for columns or for rows, but um, yeah, gap for the first column to zero. Yeah, that's possible, but like uh, this is coming from uh, the padding from the container, I think. So it's really just a container, yeah. output container. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. That's it. So okay, if we would inspect this, uh, like this is. Um, yeah. Like see, it's this is the container, gap. so that's oh, right, it's from. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No worries. Uh, I also got confused. Uh, I was like, "Oh God, so now I have to, now I have to perform an impression." Yeah, like there is there, there's, there's, there's no gap uh, on the sides. It's from JSPIN, I think. They just standardly. If you want to add from the sides, I'm sorry. then you would just simply do a padding on your container. Oh. So you're just padding uh, ten pixels. So you can do that with the grid gap. No, no, no. It it can target the uh, gaps. Uh, it's also possible, like the crystal and Salon names now act a bit like, like they are table cells. Yep. Can you also just say I want to move crystal up uh, automatically based on its height and then rust also goes up? Like crystal automatically based on its height to up and Salon also? No, just crystal shouldn't be the same height as Salon, right? Because there's less content. All right. Can you make it to oh. make that smaller and then rust go up automatically? Mm, yeah, there there is there is a way to uh, to target the alignment of your cells, and I will show you my slides how you can do that. So during the during the uh, during the hands-on, you can experiment with that. So that that is possible. Uh, what happens if uh, the content in one of the cells is like twice as big? Like what happens if this content is twice as big? No, like an example in crystal, if you put twice as much content, what happens to the height of the Oh, other? it automatically scales with it. I can demonstrate that. 
So if we had crystal set to Yes, it's auto. But because the automatic, because I didn't define my grid template rows, it's automatically set to, to the default, which is auto. But you can, you have the flexibility to do whatever you want there. And the cool thing about CSS grid is, if I want to display this with a text box, it's possible. So this is not a, 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 a display grid cell or something. No, you can just do whatever you want. And that's the biggest power of grid, of, of CSS grid above uh, the table. So we used fractions for the, the, the column layout. Uh, I imagine that the fractions work on the full width of the, the grid. Yes. How do the fractions work on the uh, vertically in the rows? Because uh, does it just scale for the window or it it's it's it, 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 it scales according to the uh, to the height of the container. You mean this? Yeah, let's say you minimize the text in one sentence. What will happen? Oh. All right, I can show you that. So if I understand you correctly, you want something like black. So it will it's because it's set uh, uh, because rows is set to um, to auto. It will look at this and it says, oh, you need this much height. And you also need this much height because now the row is defined as a height auto that's like the height of this. All right. But can you also do something like CSS columns, where you, um, where one is uh, small and then there's a big one and they fill each other up? Uh, that is possible. That is with possible with grid. With grid, that's possible. Like grid obviously doesn't replace CSS columns, but you can you can do pretty crazy stuff with uh, CSS grid. And what you also can do, if let's say you had a really big application, you have your header, you have your main content area, but you also want a two-dimensional layout inside your main content area. It's not, it's not, that's not weird to want something like that. You can nest CSS grid containers, like just like how you can nest flex containers. It's also possible here. So our grid container can have a property of grid, inline grid, which basically is the difference between a block level or an inline level element and a subgrid, which will take, which will, which will basically tell uh, CSS grid, I want this uh, to take the properties of its parent container, and it's also going to be a grid. We can set our grid template rows and our grid template columns, just like I showed, and you can just, you can just set um, um, uh, all properties, um, um, like all different kind, different. Uh, sizes so 10 pixels 10 percent auto five pixels five so you're free in that um, you can set your you can also use fractions you can you have this sync they really have a lot of shorthands like repeat to two times one fraction but i didn't want to show that in the demo but you can also repeat five times one fraction to just make it easier to write you can name your uh, name your grid lines you can have multiple names for one grid line just i showed one grid line like calls end, but you can also have it uh, named calls end and la end, etc. And this is one of the more interesting features of uh, of CSS Grid, and this is pretty crazy, I think. Um, we have four items and four classes, so item A to through D, and we are defining our grid area. And mind you, when I spoke spoke about the terminology. A grid area is comprised of one or more grid cells which form a rectangle. So we have, a, we have our class item A, which will get the name of, from the grid area as header. We have a main, we have a sidebar and a footer. We create our template. So the rows we will set to auto. We have four columns of, both, of all four set to 50 pixels of width. And then we can set our grid template areas, which will build this simply by referencing this, these grid areas. And that is really cool. And I'd, I'd like you uh, to try this out during the hands-on session, because 
these are pretty cool stuff to play around with. What does the dot mean next between main and side talk? Nice. Uh, I'm glad you asked because I forgot about the dot. This dot means I don't want anything to be set in this grid cell. So this uh, this cell should be empty. So we have a header on, on the top, a footer on the bottom, a main main, nothing, and then a sidebar on the right. I hope that's clear for everyone. So grid gaps, I showed you grid gaps. And, uh, so we have a grid column, grid column gap, grid row gap, and a shorthand. There are a lot of shorthands. Aligning, we have some of the uh, like similar alignment features uh, as we saw in Flexbox. We have justify items, we have align items, we have justify content and align content. And these basically affect uh, grid cells, like uh, justify items and align items affect grid cells. And justify content and ali align content affects the whole grid inside the container. I will link to um, link to examples where you can show, uh, see this visual. And um, mind you, in just in these alignments, you don't have grid start, but you just simply have start and end and center. Like I would expect grid start or grid end, but no, they just skip that. And with the justify content and align content, they also have space evenly, which Flexbox also doesn't have because I don't know. I, I, I think space evenly would also be nice and flexible. So, well, the main thing to take away is do play with grid, and CSS grid is really awesome. I mean, you can prepare for when CSS grid is actually here, but it's really not production ready. So, unless you really, um, you really target the newest of the newest branches with all the experimental flags turned on, then by all means use this. So to learn to learn more again, CSS Tricks has an excellent guide. It's, it's it's really good. The specifications is also really good. It's not so boring. Uh, Mozilla's uh, d uh, developer documentation is also really good, and Mozilla is actually the first one that supports Grid almost fully. And Grid by example is from an author called uh, Rachel Andrew, I think, and she also wrote a book about CSS Grid, which is also a really nice resource to have. So, any questions about CSS Grid? So you said it plays really well together with Flexbox, or people are often choosing between Flexbox and CSS Grid. But can you think of any use case where you would want to use both, maybe? Where well, you would want to use both? Yeah. Um, if CSS, when CSS Grid is uh, supported fully, you basically almost always want to uh, use both. Okay. Because you, de you define your headers, you define your main content, and all, this, all these uh, individual UI elements you want to display with Flexbox because it's really nice with Flexbox to display uh, one dimensional uh, layout. Um, when I would, however, like right now, I would say use, use Flexbox to build two dimensional layouts, just the nesting Flexbox. Like that wouldn't be the recommended practice if CSS Grid was fully supported, but right now you can do that with uh, Flexbox. So if you're going to work with this, you might need to enable uh, flags in your browser for CSS Grid. Here's also a really nice website which, which demonstrates how you could do that. I, I believe the latest, uh, latest versions of Chrome and Firefox support this out of the box. It's turned on auto automatically. And my slides are found on GitHub on this URL. Uh, it's not yet public. I will, I will set it public in like five minutes after the talk. And for the hands-on we will have uh, uh, in a couple of minutes, I would say pick a website, preferably one that you've built yourself before, and create the same layout using CSS Grid and Flexbox. So you will, you will be able to see how easy it is with CSS Grid and Flexbox as opposed to how you've built it before, and the pain you felt when you built the layout. And try making it responsible, even if the original uh, <coughs> isn't. <laughs> Oh, damn it, typo. And a bonus would be don't use floats, don't use clears, don't use tables, and don't use vertical lines. So that's it for my talk. Thank you for listening. Awesome.